Hey guys, welcome to my first look at Edmund McMillan's Basement Collection, which is a collection of eight of his old Flash games, as well as a bunch of little extras like uh, developer commentaries, or maybe not commentaries, but interviews and sketches and just interesting information that you may not have had otherwise. So the first thing I'm going to say before we get started, there are a couple of points that I want to make about this. I've seen a lot of people complaining about this game, saying that it doesn't have a lot of content or the games aren't very good or anything like that. If you are going into this expecting another Isaac or something like that that's gonna suck up a bunch of your time and be an amazingly awesome polished experience then uh, you don't want to buy this because this is not uh, th this is a history of Ed's development as a game developer <laughs> if, if you'll pardon the uh, the redundancy there but it's it's to see a little history of what he's done in the past and I find that really interesting just from the standpoint of somebody who enjoys Ed's current work. I like to, to see where he came from. And, uh, you know, besides that, there's also just some really cool games in here. So, oh, the other thing I want to mention is that uh, you're probably going to want to own a controller and know how to use Joy to Key for this game. If you Google Joy to Key, that'll help you a lot for all kinds of PC games. That just allows you to map keys to a joypad. Uh, which allows me to, even though this game has absolutely no joypad support, <clears throat> play a few of the games with a joypad because they don't play very well on the keyboard. Um, I have some problems with the controls of a few of these, and I'll point those out as we get going. So let's get started here. We've got this disturbing picture of, like, a mutated Ed hanging down in front of our screen. And let's get started. Let's go left to right. So the first game here, this is just like a soundtrack that I unlocked by doing something or other. And we've got all this locked content. I believe none of that is games. That's just more interesting stuff of Ed's that we can see. Like the soundtrack. Just extras that you can unlock. And I like that. I find that fun. So, the first game we're going to play here is Meat Boy. This is not Super Meat Boy as the game is... Sorry, as I grab my controller here. As the game is uh, very quick to point out. This is the prototype version of Meat Boy that was developed before they got like the big deal with Microsoft and made this big awesome game with controller support and all this. This controls with the keyboard and the keyboard controls are garbage. This is the first of the games where I really would not want to play this without a gamepad and probably the most important one to play with a gamepad. It has you like using the arrow keys to move rather than WASD. It's just it's awful. It doesn't control well at all. So get Joy to Key, get uh, Joypad and even uh, with the, uh, as we get started on the first level here, even with the gamepad, I find this game to control pretty poorly compared to Super Meat Boy, and I'm probably not being totally fair on it because I'm used to Meat Boy's controls, so I'm, you know, when I say that the controls in this game are garbage, what they feel like to me, I'm comparing it to a much, much better, more finished product of the same game. But because of that, because I'm used to uh, Super Meat Boy, the this game just feels super awkward to control for me and uh, that you know that's a problem this is probably one that I won't get a lot of enjoyment out of for that reason except as a historical like wow this is where Meat Boy came from um, as for what specifically is wrong with the controls first off there's no run button which uh, makes a lot of precise platforming feel incredibly shitty uh, it's very hard to get on one specific square in this game because you are always running at full, full tilt, uh, essentially. Like, for example, can't really get down here. Come on, man. There we go. And um, the other big problem with the controls is wall jumping is weird in that you have to jump before pushing the direction you want to jump. So to jump off this wall, I have to be holding down the, uh, the right arrow or the uh, right on the D-pad is what I'm using. To, and then hit jump and then switch quickly to left or the other way around to wall jump to the right and if I don't do that then I just uh, like here's me trying to do a wall jump I just fall off the wall uh, which is incredibly annoying so here's probably the first level where the controls became a problem for me just because hey well that wasn't so bad I've gotten used to them I played a fair amount into the game to make sure I'm at least okay at it um, but it took me a lot of getting used to the controls. But yeah, anything where precise movement is required, which, you know, in Meat Boy, that's kind of, for those of you who played Super Meat Boy, that's probably, you're thinking like, yeah, the entire game. Yeah, so far I haven't gotten to too much of that. I'm still fairly early in the game. I'm in the salt factory right now. Um, 
But anything that requires precise record. Uh, wow. That's the biggest stutter I've ever had. Anything that requires precise controls or anything uh, that has a lot of wall jumping, especially wall jumping in the other direction from hitting the wall, is going to make you feel sad if you have played um, Super Meat Boy. Or at least that's how it is for me. Okay, come on. <laughs> Fucking this up entirely. This will probably be the last level we show off. I think you guys get the concept here. But, uh, you know, at, if I were... Man, I'm fucking this up. If I were... Jesus Christ, I thought I could make that jump. Yeah, just everything about this feels a little bit less tight. But if I were being more fair about the game and I hadn't played uh, Super Meat Boy, then I would probably feel a lot more positive about Meat Boy than I do. But it feels weird and sad to play uh, Super Meat Boy but with terrible controls compared to the original. So if you want to play Meat Boy, play Super Meat Boy is what I'm saying here. That's a fucking great game. Me Super Meat Boy has the best platforming controls I've ever seen in any game ever, so check that out. Anyway, next game here is Coil. I want to show very, very little of Coil and here's why. Uh, Coil is not a game as I would describe it really. If I, if I were defining it I would say it's more of a story than a game. This is just a really interesting, weird, indie kind of storytelling that uses very limited gameplay elements, just with the mouse, to kind of make you work your way through the story. So we're going to play through a little tiny bit, but the reason I'm not going to show off very much of this at all is because, um, because of what I just said. It's very, very short, and it's something that you want to experience yourself. So everything in this game is very biological. We're we're just going through all of these weird, maybe uncomfortable biological um, puzzles here. So we're playing with these cells, trying to get them lumped into three separate lumps. So get the get the green guys together. Oh come on! <laughs> so this is going to be the last one we show off. There we go. Alright, so, if you want to play Coil, play it yourself. I'm sure, yeah, I feel pretty okay about it. I don't feel like Coil's anywhere near the best game on here. I just, I thought it was interesting and fun to play. I could see people easily disagreeing with me on either of the two extremes. Either like, man, Coil was one of the most deep experiences I've ever had in my life. Like, I really, just like, it touched me deeply. I could see people saying that. I could also see people saying... Uh, Coil is too deep for you bullshit, it has no gameplay, it's just a piece of shit. So make your own opinion, play it yourself uh, if you pick up this collection. Next game on the list is Triacnid. Uh, this is a game that I don't feel overwhelmingly positive about, but it does. it's ad admirable. I really like the way it's trying to do things here. I just feel like the controls aren't quite there, it feels awkward to me. And there are also... Maybe we'll see this when I play it. I feel like I get hit a lot and I don't see what damaged me. I really don't understand. I've died completely, like, ha never seeing anything that could have damaged me. I'm just walking around randomly. And I'll do it the next time the same way and the same or the same thing does not happen. I just can keep on going. So anyway, this is the uh, controls. You pick up each of Triacnid's feet and move them and he can stick on to whatever and then you move the balance of his head with uh, WASD. And then he can pick up objects with the right, ma right mouse button and stick them in his mouth to carry them around or eat them, depending on what the object is. You can also spin a re web. I've never been good at this. So this web spinning is difficult for me. Uh, but you press space to make a web, and then you can stick it to things and kind of hang off of it. You can grab your line with right click and then rebel repel. And, uh, oh, no, sorry. You stop the line from being spun with right click. So you can, like... You can go down a cliff without killing yourself, essentially, with that. And then, um, you can interact with your web by grabbing onto it and putting it on platforms, and, yeah, like I said, I have trouble with that. But let's just just start the, uh, the first couple. Well, let's see the intro cutscene here. This giant, uh, monster came and took away, I think that's our baby, and we're this mother... I would say a spider, but we only have three legs, so... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so we're getting a little bit of control recap here. 
So, as you can see, we grab these legs to move around. If I want to, I can grab this rock. Grab the rock. Triacnid. Put it in my mouth, and we can carry that with us. There's no real reason to at this point. This is just a very introductory phase. And this area right here is actually one of the places. I think it might be like stretching myself too far or interacting with one of my legs poorly that does it, but I've gotten hurt there. And uh, did you guys see anything that could have hurt me? I sure didn't. So yeah, it's very, very strange to me. Um, but yeah, like I said, very interesting game. Very, uh... Yeah, I, I don't want to quite say well designed, because that goes against my earlier point. But it has an interesting design. The aesthetic is fantastic. And the control scheme is super interesting. No, fuck, come back. Damn it. <laughs> I need that, uh, I need that web. Or that, uh, egg sack. Not sure where it went. I hope it doesn't fall off a cliff or something. Fuck, the last time I played this level I just kind of picked it up and put it in my mouth, but this time I fucked up. And, okay, just, just hanging out in this, uh, this green water. That's fine with me. So now we have to kind of platform our way up. We'll hit a switch, and this will be the last level I show off, because this will take me a while, probably. This is where the game gets super awkward, trying to get done with these annoying platforming elements. There we go. Doing much better than I did last time, I gotta say. I'm sure this control scheme is something I would get used to if I spent more time with the game. But it does, it just feels awkward to me. Though again, that's not necessarily me saying I feel negative about this game. I just feel like it doesn't quite accomplish what it set out for. Which is really what the basement collection is all about. This is Ed's earlier experiences with video game development. So of course, these are not gonna be polished. This is shit he put out for free on Newgrounds. This is a history. So fucking just... Okay, good. I was kind of afraid that was going to kill me, but we seem to be okay here. And let's just head along here. So you can see, like, every everything's an effort in this game, which I don't really like. It Just walking along this relatively flat surface feels really shitty. And I think we can drown in there? I'm not really clear. Okay, come on. Just move your fucking legs. Oh my god. See? Look at that. I died, and I have no idea... How or why? It certainly was not the water, because I've done that exact same thing before, but I think I overstretched myself or something, but that's not the first time I've had a random death. I should really look into exactly why that happens. But anyway, I think that's enough of Triacnid. It's an interesting concept for sure, and you should definitely try it out yourself. Next on our list is Aether, which I feel overwhelmingly positive about, but again, I don't want to, uh, you know, let's listen to the... Oh, this is, uh, I haven't seen this one. Let's try that out. Uh, the, the Danny B is the one I've listened to before, and it was fantastic. This is kind of cool as well. So let's go ahead and start the game. So this is one I don't want to show off too much of, but a story is told of a, bo a boy who is lonesome, who strayed a bit too far from his home. As the daylight grew dimmer, he saw a faint glimmer, lost in the wake of sea foam. For the boy had a feeling that this monster was keeling, kneeling, excuse me, to offer his hand to a friend. The boy darted away, but then turned to stray, afraid of the me message he'd send. He lowered his head, and the boy bustled up, looking proud atop his new steed. For the boy had a venture, he was bound for adventure, and this monster had planted the seed. <laughs> I bet it did. If you know what I mean. Looking up to the stars, he thought to himself, imagine all of the people up there. Could they be as lonely, or am I one and only? Would the people on Earth really care? So our story unfolds, a boy and his pet, leaving his home without care or regret. Truly a tale that none will forget. So, in this game, we explore the galaxy by swinging into space, grabbing clouds, and we'll see how this starts. Uh, how this works in a second. Every planet has its own little puzzle, so you have to seek out these planets by propelling yourself through space and then help out the person on that planet. Every puzzle that I've found has just been somebody who's sad, who you help out and make them more happy. So it's WASD and the mouse. Use the mouse to propel your tongue outward. I don't want to show too much of this, because it's always the same puzzles every time, obviously. And uh, there aren't a fantastic number of them. I haven't beaten this yet. And I've actually found one of the puzzles to be incredibly frustrating. Um, and I, yeah, I haven't played too much after that, but this is definitely something I want to go back and play more of. I've just been trying to 
as quickly as possible get all of these uh, all of these games mastered so that I could do this well not mastered obviously but uh, you know become proficient in all of these games so I could make this look at so we were just propelling ourselves through space as you can see really it's it's fun it feels good using the tongue to swing yourself in this game it's it's very nice and this is very this is probably the nicest little thing that uh, Ed's ever done. <clears throat> I mean, not nice as in like, uh, you know, he's he's not a nice guy otherwise. But it's just a very like pleasant little experience. It's it's not gross or terrifying or anything like that. Oh shit, this is a terrible planet. I don't want to be here. Let's go to a different one. <laughs> um, or actually, I guess I could show this one off. So in this planet, where is that little guy? So we've got this guy. And he says, I'll never amount to anything, they, they all think I'm dumb. And then we've got this guy over here, who says, one day I'll be great and show them all. And then we've got these, uh, these moons up here, who are, like, basically being dickheads to him. <laughs> so we gotta, oops. Come on. There we go. Personally, I think he's pretty cool. Okay, that moon wasn't a dickhead, but we killed him anyway. <laughs> Fuck that guy, right? But yeah, we've got this dickhead moon up here. There we go. Uh, come on. It's a little bit annoying swinging onto these planets. It feels way worse trying to do this than just trying to get into space. Okay, there we go. I'll never go back home. Oh, you're going back home, buddy. So that's the style of puzzle you can expect in Aether. Again, I encourage you to play this yourself. Uh, I'm not going to show off too much of it. Because I feel like I would ruin the experience for a lot of people. But it feels great to play. It's a very nice little game. It has a nice aesthetic. And uh, it's just pretty and nice and fun and charming. And uh, definitely a departure from Ed's normal stuff. Like the Binding of Isaac that's very dark and gritty. Or Meat Boy that's just kind of fucked up in a lot of ways. You got the fetus in a jar who's your antagonist. You know, so we're propelling ourselves into space again and that's a good place to end Aether. So our next is one of my favorites in the bunch, Time Fakuk. Uh, this is where Stevie, or uh, Steven and Little Stevie come from in uh, Binding of Isaac. And it is weird as hell. So we've got this intro sequence here as I switch my joy to key to my time for cuck. Because I obviously want to control this one with the controller. Where'd my controller? It's in my lap. Controller's in my lap, guys. But anyway, really like weird, creepy kind of game, as you can see from this intro. So this game is a 2D platformer about, it's roughly about time travel, but also extra dimensions and fucking with gravity. It has some VVVVVV in there, for sure. Um, so let's start. I was afraid of that. Am I going to have to, uh, hang on, I want to, I just want to go back to the main menu, man. Oh, maybe this exit button, yeah. I kind of want to start a new game, but I don't want to delete all my uh, save data, but it looks like I have to. Well, that's fine. We'll erase our save data. Did that happen? Okay, good. So now we can watch the intro sequence so we can understand what's going on in the plot here. So we just find this box. <laughs> oh my god, what year is this? Hey man, listen to me very carefully. I'm you. You from the future! Sent back in time 20 minutes from now to tell you that you need to get into this box now. So I'm trying to pause so I don't have to say things so slowly. It's imperative that you get into this box. Our existence depends on it. And let's face it, you don't have much else to do these days anyway. I'm going to stop reading this out loud. You guys can read it yourselves. So we we just stumble across this box, and ourselves from the future jumps out. 
and tells us to get the fuck in the box. <laughs> and I wouldn't lie to a fellow me, now would I? But time is ticking. Alright. This guy's really angry that we're not getting in the box. There we go. We're in the box. So that's the start of this crazy adventure. We're this dude right here. We have to find our ways to uh, find our way to those portals at the end of every level. And we can use the uh, A key to switch dimensions. They're always oh, I should uh, I should definitely show you guys what this guy is saying on the side here. Death is only in your mind, friend. You can trust me. I mean, you wouldn't lie to yourself, would you? So these guys on the side are all us from different time periods. So when you first come in, obviously they're all from the future, but as you get into the future, you start getting messages from the past as well. It's, just, it's really weird and unsettling. So we're going to pass through that level unscathed. And now we can see some jumping puzzles. So some things only exist in some dimensions, obviously. So we can use the dimension shifting aspect to get through that puzzle, no problem. You can see uh, how the background is dark for a lot of this. If the background is dark, that means that if you shift dimensions, you'll be inside a wall, which kills you. So we have to get down to this area here. And... Uh, that allows us to safely shift dimensions, and then we can find the exit on the other side here. So, so far, super simple puzzles, right? But as you get on, these puzzles get fucking dastardly. So we're gonna... Oh, I can't take both of them at once. So if you're touching one of these boxes, then it will come with you. So we're gonna come up here and use these boxes to make a little platform for ourselves so we can get up here and complete the level oops keys open the uh... the portals remember that time we had fun? Oh man i should really stop skipping past this guy if you play this on your own and i should probably save it for that uh... but if you play this on your own you may find that you enjoy the commentary of that uh, that other dude because he is he's pretty funny I think hang on we need to uh, try to figure out exactly what the best way to do this is so let's grab ah shit <laughs> okay there we go yes okay There we go, okay, we found the key. Now we can go through the portal over here. Yeah, so yeah, I'm super enjoying Time Fukuk so far, and it also seems to be fairly long. I've spent a long time with this game and have not beaten it yet. So it seems to have a decent number of levels. There's also a level editor, and I think uh, the levels that people have made from Newgrounds transfer over to this, so I'm not totally sure. Let's check that out, actually. Uh, so you can create your own, this entering the unknown simulates a full game randomly generated from user-made levels arranged by difficulty. So it just kind of puts you into a randomly generated game made by other users. So yeah, totally works. Uh, which is super interesting. So it makes it almost like a Binding of Isaac type thing. Where you can, yep, that will kill me. I have no idea how to get through this level. I don't really want to try to figure it out on camera but I'm sure it is perfectly interesting. So that's Time for Cuck. Uh, probably one of the gems on this uh, on this collection. I really enjoy Time for Cuck. It's a great game. And, uh, let's move on to Spewer. This is another game kind of like Triacnid. That, uh oh. That's not good. You guys are probably seeing a black screen right now. Let's open that back up because the game g just crashed. That is a problem I have not had before. Could be. Oh, you're not seeing a black screen because I am recording with Camtasia. So now you were able to see like my games list. All right, let's get back in there. Um, oh, of course, and now we're in full screen. That was kind of a disaster. I have no idea why that happened. Now I have to move this back over here. 
hopefully that's in a good position. I, it's hard to tell while I'm recording. Okay, super annoying. Let's play Spewer. So Spewer is another game like Triacted that is kind of... Where's the uh, map list? I know I, I can get to the map list. Why did Firefox just open? Okay. Things are going crazy since uh, since the game crashed. Anyway, we'll do it live. What a... Okay, chapter one completed. Oh, I see. That was the end of chapter one. Okay, I was hoping to just start on the first level here, so let's do that. Um, Spewer is a game that allows you to move around with WASD. And uh, as you can see, the first level is super easy. But you can also... Oh, we don't have Vomit yet. The first few levels don't introduce the mechanic. It's just an, a normal platformer so far, but pretty shortly here. Yeah, see, here's this stuff with Spacebar. Uh, or not. I guess we can't eat it yet. Okay. Anyway. That was... That was level 3, right? Yeah. Now we can spew, which is, of course, the uh, entire gimmick of spewer. And I don't feel like this controls particularly well, but it's an interesting concept, and it, it does well... F it does okay for itself. It's a... It's a fun game in its own right, but I don't enjoy it super much. I feel like it's not one of the best on this... Uh, on this collection but you know it's still perfectly fine and for how cheap the collection is like getting this amongst other games on a collection that goes for 279 right now that's pretty good so as you can see we're just using our vomit oh that was a mistake I forgot what I what we're supposed to do here we have to fill up this area so it's a uh, you know the uh, the gimmick is not one-dimensional. We also have this physical stuff that we leave behind. That didn't work. Hang on, I know there's a way to do this. Maybe I'm just supposed to... Nope! I know there's a way to have enough spew in here that, uh... I think we have to be careful about getting it all on the right side, though. But, yeah, so if we can fill up this little area with vomit... Yeah, there we go. Then we can just swim on through eat up a little bit. Every time you get rated on how many jumps, how many steps, and uh, how much puke you saved. So you have to make sure to eat it back up whenever possible, which is, you know, absolutely just charming as a, <laughs> as a game design element. So here's the introduction of switches, which will just cause basically random things to happen. Well, not random, but they'll cause something that you are not really able to t determine yourself to happen. I don't have any spew apparently kinda of thought I did I was gonna use it to get over there I guess we have to jump from right here there we go that'll do it so that's spewer I think you've seen as much as you need to see to understand the gimmick of this game it's uh... it's decent it is like I said there's nothing particularly wrong with it I just don't like it as much as some of the others okay this one is probably my favorite on the collection gray matter is an arcade game essentially it's Man, this this game would oh hang on let me uh, quickly change my control setup to gray matter and joy to key. Let's start on normal because I haven't played anything else. This game is insanely hard, and uh, it is this game where oops that was stupid as hell. It's a game where you control this little black dot that's flying around and use it to kill things and anything that is oh my god I can't believe I died there. That's uh, one of my problems with this game, is you're so much faster than enemy bullets that you can just run right into them. Um, like, you can chase one down by accident, that happens to me all the time. But, yes, yeah, so this has a lot of the arcade like, uh, you know, just one more play, just one more quarter kind of thing. You can buy upgrades with the points you have, we have 8,000 points, let's get an option, which, uh will give us this little thing circling around us, makes us much more offensively powerful, which can help keep you safe. So here's the introduction of the first weird enemy that doesn't fire at you. Instead, these guys, if you touch their tails, you die. So you have to be very careful about attacking them from the right angle. I'm doing incredibly poorly, by the way, here. Uh, you can also slow down with uh, one of the buttons, which happens like that, and you can speed up 
with another one of the buttons. Of course, I'm using Joy to Key, so I don't remember what they are, but they're explained pretty well. And uh, the keyboard controls are not particularly bad. I just... Oh, that was abysmal. I just really prefer the... Uh, the controls as they are with a controller. I feel like it's much more natural to move around with an analog stick in a game like this. So I got it. <laughs> I've, I've tried to focus on the game while also explaining all of the different gimmicks because there are a lot of them. Fucked up there. Can't buy a shield yet. So, um, oh my fucking god. <laughs> I thought I could get that guy before he blew up on me. Not the case. Gotta be careful about these guys. Let's just zoom in there. We have a boost meter down at the bottom, you can see. I don't really use the boost too much, because I feel like that often will just help me run into bullets more quickly than otherwise I may have, uh... Oh, fuck. <laughs> I can't believe I'm not out of lives yet. Oh, well, now I am. That guy spawned a bullet while I was inside him. But anyway, let's try that one more time. So, so you can buy things, that's one gimmick that it has. You kill enemies by walking into them rather than any kind of shooting. That's another something I might consider a gimmick or a, a unique aspect of this game. And another aspect, the third aspect, is if you form a triangle by killing three of the same type of enemy, then everything inside that triangle dies. And uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but this is more of an arcade game. It's not a story element or anything. But at the very end of the game, I've gotten here once, and uh, I had like the luckiest run in the world to get there. There is a boss character that you can't harm directly, but he spawns enemies, and to harm him, you have to kill the enemies in such a way that he is inside the triangle, and meanwhile, he's just spawning this bullet hell at you, and it is incredibly difficult. Alright, we're gonna spend some money here for sure. Let's get a shield, let's get an option. So the shield allows us to take an extra hit before we die, and the option, of course, is this offensive satellite that we got earlier. It does not block bullets for you, all it does is harm things, so you don't have to get quite as, quite as close before you do damage to something, which can be very useful. There's my shield gun, unfortunately. Doing a lot better this time, this will probably be my last run on camera. Every once in a while when you die, it like reminds you, hey dude, you could fucking buy something and maybe not die next time like a big scrub. But, oh, okay, this is scary as hell. Alright. Just go for it. Okay. Hey, that worked out. Okay. Excellent. Um, but yeah, I really like this game. If this game had been created in, like, the Galaga era, of course, with simpler graphics, just, like, th this gameplay would have performed so well in the era of games where it was like, just one more quarter, Mom, just one more quarter. Uh, because it, it has that huge addicting quality of it's very, very difficult, but you always feel like, man, if I just tried playing one more time, I could do so much fucking better. And uh, this game is a blast to play. I really enjoy it. By itself, this game would be worth the uh, the 279 I paid for this because I got it on sale. Um, j like assuming it wasn't available for free, like I would pay 279 to have this game on my computer. Uh, to completely ignore everything else in the collection is great. I really enjoy this one. Oops. Okay. So the only problem is super hard to play while you're talking, because uh, you have to focus intently here. I'm gonna... nope, can't buy anything yet. Next upgrade is at 1500, so I'll look out for that. And that will give me another shield. And the, the way shields work is every time you spawn, you get your shields back, but they'd never come back naturally. So if I buy a second shield, then every time I spawn, I'll get three, three hits before I die. Yep, finally did go down there. These guys are assholes. You have to hit them in the ass here. So like I was saying, everything that is pink uh, can be attacked. Like that pink and nubby looking. Everything that is flashing black and white will kill you if you walk into it. So the game is very, very, very clear about what does, what is and is not a good idea. You never feel like, oh, fuck you, game. I didn't know I would die if that happened. It was fucking black and white, dude. You knew, you knew exactly what was going to happen if you did that. And uh, also just the the uh, layout here is very clean and easy to read. I could maybe go for the uh, the main like black dot being a little bit more distinctive so it's easier to tell exactly where I am, but really there I haven't had a major issue with that at all. These guys have some great AI, man. They are so good at watching each other's backs, but they turn slowly so you have to take advantage of that. These guys have some crazy ass shots. Just kill them as quickly as possible. 
This is actually way farther than I was expecting to get on camera. Let's go ahead and buy our second shield now that we can afford it. We'll keep going here. Not a fan of spending money on the boost because, like, like I said earlier, it's just a way to propel myself into bullets quickly, like, the majority of the time. We're just gonna try to stay away from those mouth assholes as long as possible. Maybe even, like, make a triangle around them. Nope. But, oh, fuck. <laughs> so dumb. Okay, and then just get around behind this guy. Yeah, there we go. Continue on here. How many lives do I have left? I think that's three. These guys are fucking dickheads. I hate these guys so much. They teleport uh, every time you would hit them unless they're in the middle of trying to shoot you. And if they're in the middle of trying to shoot you and you walk into them, then they have a good chance of shooting you in turn. But there we go. You can also kind of use the boost a lot of the time to maybe catch them off guard, but it's all very random. Oh, fuck. Thought that was a teleporter guy. I did not realize he had a mouse that was going to destroy me. Can't buy anything yet. Need 2400 now for another option. And uh, you max out at three shields and three options, meaning that you can get hit three times and you have three satellites following you. Oop, that was close. These guys have lasers. Gotta watch out for that. There we go. Oh, fuck. <laughs> There's too much. Too much going on. Okay. God damn it. You guys who have watched my Isaac Let's Play know that things that have instantly firing lasers. Not a big fan, not very good at dealing with that. I'm talking of course about the eye lasers. And the uh, gluttony dickheads. The vagina spewers or whatever you want to call them. Wow, I, I honestly can't believe I'm still alive here. I thought this was going to be pretty a pretty quick second attempt here. But actually doing alright, might even get to the final boss. Okay, I can definitely buy some more shit here. Let's buy another shield, because I can afford it. So my shield is maxed now, I can take three hits before going down. Uh, oh my god, we made it to the final boss! Oh no we didn't. Excuse me, this is the last level before the final boss though. These guys are fucking crazy. Alright. Fuck you man, don't do it. Oh, come on. There we go. I should really use my slow down button more often, considering how often I accidentally walk into shit. Because I'm going way too fast for my own good, but... You know, I gotta go fast. It's important. Okay. This shit is crazy. Just kinda hope. Just walk into shit. Try to loop around so they can't get a lock on you. That actually worked pretty well. Kill that guy. It's going okay here. Let's buy our third option. And then after this, we'll just pump everything into one-ups. Because, again, I don't feel like the boost is necessary at all. I I don't think that's a, a judicious use of points. Even though it's pretty cheap, I just don't need it. All right, that's, that's my game over. Got really close to the final boss there, surprisingly. So let's get out of gray matter. And the last game on here is just a total joke. It's um, AVGM, which stands for Abusive Video Game Manipulation. And uh, this is Edmund McMillan's dig on um, MMOs. So you flip the switch, and it gives you stuff. But then you have to flip it more, and more, and more to get more stuff. And uh, he's... Of course, comparing this directly to level grinding. Oh my god! I never got that my first playthrough. Holy shit! Do I have to censor that? Probably not. Um, so anyway, yeah, I... He's, he's comparing this to a... Man, I have to turn down my volume. Distractingly loud. Um, he's comparing this to level grinding in an MMO where you just you click the button more times and you get more shit and you click it more and more and more times and you get more shit and it's all useless shit and it doesn't do anything for you anyway I don't necessarily totally agree with this there are definitely MMOs that do subscribe to this but there are other things that you can do in MMOs as well but he's he's railing against the idea of grinding for levels and like how doing things you don't enjoy in a game is somehow fun but yeah, I, I think I've shown enough of this. You have to click 10,000 times to unlock everything, and I'm not going to do that on camera. But you can move all these things around, make yourself a nice little house or whatever. Got uh, got pieces of the skeleton. Man, maybe if I click a little bit more, I could get more pieces of the skeleton. And then I got it. There we go. 
I don't know what this is. It's kind of like a hat for this guy. That works. Sure. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and there's our... Yeah. So that's our, our nice looking house here that we have created. And if you keep on clicking that and clicking that and clicking that, then I have heard that you get colored objects and all kinds of shit. So that is completely a joke game, not something to figure into your appreciation for the basement collection at all. So, that is everything on the basement collection. So, I would definitely say, if any of this looked fun to you, this is a super cheap collection, uh, and you get some beautiful music by Danny B. Uh, as you've been hearing continually, that dude makes some good music, and uh, it is, I think he made like new tracks for every single game here as well as you can get the soundtrack and you also get all kinds of bonus content I would say if you are a fan of Edmund of McMillan's this is worth it just for the examination of his creative development process and there are also of course some really fantastic games here chiefly Time for Cuck is great Grey Matter is great uh, Aether is very charming Coil is interesting for a playthrough but don't expect to play it again because it's very simple uh, it's, it, yeah, that one's just a story. It's interesting to see where Meat Boy came from. Triacnid tries hard, but is a little bit difficult to play in my estimation, but you may enjoy it. Same thing with Spewer. Anyway, thank you guys for watching my look at the Basement Collection. I will see you guys next time.